Hello, I'm here with uh, a look at the current previews catalog from Diamond Distribution, October 2023. Um, I'll get into it. It was a pretty light month for me. So the first thing, I did not get a Marvel catalog. So um, all I have is a DC. The only thing I noticed of interest... Um, Milestone Compendium Volume 3. I read the Milestone comics when they were first released, back when every company was trying to create a universe. Um, I did not stick around very long. And these things ran a lot longer than I thought they did. Um, so yeah, now we're into three giant Compendium volumes. Um, I don't really have anything to say about those comics, but I thought it was of interest to notice that that many had been collected. I'm really curious to know how many copies of those compendiums DC is actually selling. Um, getting into the catalog. Okay. So from Boom, Under Heist, number one. A pretty terrible num uh, title. But uh, it's written by David and Maria Laffam, illustrated by David Laffam. Um, I like David Laffam, so um, I'll keep an eye out for this when it gets collected. Um, so interesting to see he's returning. I think this is sort of a supernatural crime series, which um, frankly sounds a little underwhelming to me. But um, I will keep an open mind. Uh, from Image, what do we have here? Astro City Opus Edition. Uh, it's basically a Astro City Omnibus. 1168 pages, 8 by 12, $150. So I like the Astro City comics. Um, I don't have any interest in upgrading them to any of the new editions they've been putting out, much less this grotesquely expensive one. But I thought I'd point it out. Also, Volume 3 of Hey Kids Comics, um, The Schlock of the New by Howard Chaikin. Um, I have not read the first two volumes yet, though I have picked them up. So at some point I will check them out. Um, I pretty much will check out almost anything Chaikin does, uh, even though the results may vary pretty wildly. Um, and... Where the Body Was by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Another hardcover. I think this one's going to be a standalone, not part of a series. Um, cover is a little different for their style. Maybe that's intentional. Um, I listened to an interview with Brubaker on a podcast recently. The interview was from a while ago, but it was about his upcoming book, Night Music or Night Moves whatever it's called, um, came out a while ago. And uh, it was an interesting interview. Um, Brubaker is in kind of a uh, strange position in comics that he does pretty well, but he's sort of off there on his own island. He, he and Sean Phillips have just sort of created this brand for themselves. So, um, But I thought it was an interesting conversation. Always interested to hear about the people who get successful um, just through grinding it out. Um, Dark Horse. Den, Volume 3, Children of Fire. Not much else to say. Um, the Den books are, and the, the Corbin books in general, are eagerly awaited by everybody. And so, uh, there you go. It's nice that they're getting made. Wish they were maybe a, a little thicker and a little cheaper, but what you going to do? Also, uh, Eerie Archives, Volume 4. Um, you know, Archie Goodwin, Frank Frazetta, Reed Crandall, Tom Sutton, you know. So, the usual Warren stuff. Um, I, it's a real blind spot for me in comics history. I, I know they exist, but I haven't really read a whole lot of Warren material. Also, the Mobius Library is back with The Major. Um, 
speaking of thin and pricey. Um, but it's nice to see the Mobius Library maybe getting picked back up. This uh, major book was released here in the States a few years ago um, in French. I can't remember if it was a silent book or not. But I remember it being in the catalog from another company. Um, I did not pursue it, but I will now since it's part of the, the Mobius library. And hopefully we'll be getting some more of the, the premium Mobius content, not just the, the leftovers. I thought I would mention from Cinebook, The Fiery Arrow. This is another pre-Blake and Mortimer book by Edgar, Edgar P. Jacobs. Um, there was a previous one just a couple months ago. Um, so anyway, thought I'd mention it. Ed, I find Edgar P. Jacobs' Blake and Mortimer stories to be um, way too text-heavy. But um, I'm curious to see maybe what the younger work looks like. We'll see. From Fanagraphics. Um, Silly Symphonies, 1935 to 1939, starring Donald Duck and the Big Bad Wolf. Um, I don't know how many people checked out the first volume. Um, it wasn't something I was particularly interested in, but when I actually saw it in person, I was amazed at how brilliant um, the cartooning was. Just really gorgeous cartooning. Um, so, anyway, thought I would mention it. I don't know how many of these volumes they're going to be. I thought that IDW had collected four volumes before. Um, but one, I could be mis misremembering. Two, that could be different material. Um, also, The Complete Creepax, Erotic Stories Part 2, Volume 8. Um, I believe it's a ten volume set total. We're on to Volume 8. Um, these are gorgeous books. If you have any interest in creep packs, um, I can't imagine there's going to be a better way to get a hold of this material in English. Uh, The Bitter End and Other Stories, illustrated by Reed Crandall, um, written by Al Feldstein and company. So, more EC stuff. I don't know how many more of these EC books are going to be. I'd be curious to find that out. Um, here's a book I don't know anything about. Milky Way by Miguel Vila. Um, looks like it uh, had a... Originally was an Italian release. Um, I've been, I haven't read this book, but I've been able to take a look at an early copy. Um, looks very nice. So I'm curious to see what that's like. And then here's a book I knew nothing about. Frank Johnson, Secret Pioneer of American Comics, Volume 1. Wally's Gang, Early Years, 1928 to 1949. And The Bowser Boys, 1946 to 1950. Um, so, I'll read you the uh, small print here. When musician and shipping clerk Frank Johnson died in 1979... He left behind an unknown trove of 2,300 proto-graphic novel pages begun in 1928 and continuing over the next 50 years. This 600-page volume of Johnson's work, the first of two, includes Wally's gang, um, yada, 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 yada. Um, so anyway, I'm very interested in this, um haven't heard anything about it don't know anything about it don't know what it looks like how good it is um but i'm always interested in proto graphic novels interested in people who've created giant works of art um completely out of the public eye so seems right up my alley to check out moving over to floating world they have bazelli collected works volume one the Labyrinth. Uh, this is a series of volumes collecting Guido Bazzelli stories in English for the first time, um, featuring never before never before seen work to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the death of this of his master 
and his masterful skill in subversive art. Pardon me. Um, I have no idea who the hell Guido Bazelli is, but um, certainly interested to check it out. Um, Floating World can be hit or miss for me, but um, I can't say that they don't have an interesting taste in what they choose to publish. So, worth checking out. Alright. What do we have here? From Rebellion, 2000 AD. Nemesis the Warlock, Definitive Edition, Volume 1. So this stuff has been collected before, but it looks like this is going to be... Um, well, one, it's 12 by 9, which is a pretty damn good size. Um, 176 pages. I don't know how many volumes you would need at that pace. I would guess quite a few. Um, the three volumes of Nemesis I have that collect the series are all pretty decent size. The kind of, you know... Uh, Marvel Essential DC Showcase type size. So, um, anyway, it's an interesting series written by Pat Mills, art by Kevin O'Neill. Um, definitely worth checking out. I also have Fiends of the Eastern Front Omnibus, written by Jerry Finley Day and various. Art is by Carlos Esquera and various. Um, that's one that I'm pretty interested in. And down here, The Hell Trekkers. Written by John Wagner and Alan Grant. Art by Jose Ortiz and Horatio Lalia. So, don't know much about the Hell Trekkers, but uh, I'm interested. A lot of this British material looks great. There's just so much of it that uh, you can't buy everything, unfortunately. Um, from Rude Dude Publications, Nexus, the Newspaper Strips, Volume 1. The Coming of Gormando Oversized Edition, TP. So this is 9 by 12 um, I imagine that will be a pretty good presentation for the newspaper strips. I don't know if they're individual, you know, six dailies and a Sunday, or if they're all just Sundays. I don't really know anything about this. Um, to be honest, I have only a vague interest in the old Nexus comics, and I don't have much interest in all of the other stuff. There's also a Nexus, the newspaper strips, artist edition. Um, this one will be 12 by 17. Um, the deluxe edition, $300. If you want the signed and numbered limited slipcase edition, only $350. Cheap. So, anyway, if you're a Steve Rude super fan, go for it. Um... I, do, I think his art's beautiful, but um, I don't find this material to be something I need. So, from Scout Comics, a company I have little to absolutely no interest in, comes a new comic. The Maze Agency, written by the original writer, Mike W. Barr. Uh, art is by Silvano Beltramo. Um... And this is just a regular 32-page comic. I assume it's a ongoing series. I don't know. Um, I have a lot of affection for the Maze Agency from the 80s and early 90s. I enjoyed it. Um, I always liked Mike W. Barr's writing uh, when I was younger. Granted, I haven't read much in a very, very long time, but um, I did enjoy it when I was younger. Um, he really leans into whodunits. The, the premise is... Um, I mean, it's, it's basically, you know, supposed to kind of get you into a moonlighting sort of space. Uh, moonlighting is now a reference that's 40 years old. Um, can't imagine that's going to have much appeal nowadays. So, um, anyway, I'm going to check it out. I don't expect very many other people to check it out. Um, but there you go. Mike WR. I always wonder what happens to some of these older writers that just sort of disappear. Um, into the manga section from Viz. Cat-Eyed Boy, Perfect Edition, Volume 2. Um, from Kazuo Umez, 
well-regarded mangaka. Um, beautiful books, you know, big hefty, 496 pages. Um, so that's what I'm interested in. There are a couple other mangas here. Let's see. Um, Fist of the North Star, Volume 11, still trucking along. Uh, my friend Ray has told me a couple times now how many there are going to be, and every time I forget, but apparently they just keep coming. Um, and then the last one of interest to me is a book that's been interesting to me the previous couple times it's been in this catalog. They Were Eleven by Moto Hagayo. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Um, anyway, this is resolicited from... Uh, I think September last year, maybe, and I I can almost swear it's been solicited twice um, before, but um, I'm still interested in it. I hope it comes out. Um, looks like it's from Dinpa Books, a company I'm not really familiar with, but um, anyway, I'm hoping it actually happens. Um, looks like an interesting book. And that's it. Um, I did do this pretty quickly because I've been traveling, so it's very possible I missed something of real interest. If so, please leave a comment. Tell me um, what you think I missed, um, or if you have any thoughts, anything I had to, uh, to say in here. Um, otherwise, thank you very much.